Hello, my name is Brian Search, I'm Deputy Head of Collections here at Manchester Museum. I'm here with Heather Robinson, who's from the Faculty of Life Sciences. Thank you for coming in today, Heather. Thank um, you. You've been doing some really interesting work on uh, amphorae, or storage containers, from the Museum's Archaeology and Egyptology collections. Can, can you tell us something about the work you've been doing? Yes, I work with ancient DNA that's uh, removed from residues on ceramic surfaces. So I've been collaborating with the museum, working with some of the amphoras and pottery sheds uh, from both sites in ancient Egypt and from uh, Roman sites in Greater Manchester also. And uh, we've been primarily trying to ascertain the contents of these items, uh, the plant sequences that may be contained inside that give us some clues as to food transport. Uh, but in doing so, we've also isolated a lot of bacterial sequences, which have been interesting also. And what kind of things have you discovered? We, we know, for example, that the Romans and many Mediterranean empires have moved commodities like olive oil and wine around, and, and particularly the Roman Empire, we know that wine was coming from the Mediterranean to northern provinces like Britain. Uh, as, as well as the wine and olive oil, you found some, some unexpected fellow travellers on, on these amphora, haven't you? Yes, that's right. When we looked at the sequences uh, of bacteria that we were isolating from these items, um, the samples from the exteriors of the vessels tend to give us quite long, uh, well-conditioned DNA sequences from uh, the types of soil and water bacteria that we might expect to be uh, endemic to the sites where we, we excavate these items from. Whereas the uh, samples from some of the interiors, uh, particularly of the uh, Roman amphora sheds, uh, are very similar to bacteria that you might find in the guts of humans and animals uh, that we call enterobacteria. So these gut bacteria originally came from places like North Africa or Mediterranean provinces that were providing the wine, do you think? It's possible that the bacteria travelled with food. Um, one of the things that makes enterobacteria such effective pathogens is that they can survive outside of the body at refrigerator temperatures, provided they have food, although they do prefer to be in human bodies. Um, but it's also possible, we have some evidence that amphoras were being reused, so it's possible that also these types of bacteria reflect um, infections that were present in the community and the amphoras were being reused at that time. So it's possible they were using the amphorae to get rid of the, the urine and faeces perhaps? They can be reused as chamber pots but also we know that um, a consequence of for example people living in garrisons, military settlements, is that people are living very close together and um, one of the consequences of migration is that people were moving together um, and forming cities and, and close living in a way that hadn't been done before and wasn't necessarily provisioned for. So. And also establishing new settlements meant that there wasn't always a continuous supply of clean food and water. Maybe people would have been eating food that we would throw away because potentially that was in short supply. So We know that dysentery was quite common and it's, it seems to be common in all cases where people migrate in large numbers because we all have our own unique bacterial community that live in our bodies. 90% of our cells are bacterial. And we acquire immunity to those bacteria, um, partly from our parents uh, when we're born, but also through the bacteria we encounter during our lifetime. So when we leave our home environment and move to a new community, we're exposed to lots of bacteria we have no immunity to. Um, so bacteria that might make one individual sick could be harmless to another. But moving all these people together um, particularly uh, soldiers that have previously been stationed in Africa uh, from new parts of the Roman Empire, like uh, the Germanic regions. And they all come together in very close quarters, so they're then sharing bacteria, and especially enterobacteria, which can, are quite likely to cause disease. Um, and that's where sort of big pandemics, such as the Justinian plague, are emerging, uh, from people moving around, moving together, and just spreading uh, all of their microbium with them. Well, this is a fascinating area of research. Uh, I think it's going to open up a, a whole new aspect to Roman history and archaeology and shed light on the, the health of the populations in a, in a really interesting way. Thank you very much, Heather, for talking to us today. Thank you very much.